Welcome to Massive Passive Cash Flow, the podcast that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Here's your host, Gary Wilson. Hello, welcome back to the Massive Passive Cash Flow Podcast. This is Gary Wilson. I'm your host, and we're glad to have you back. Hey, if you haven't done so and you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. It's on any number of channels, you know, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, you name it. Um, and while you're out there, please go visit globalinvestoragent.com. Uh, it's not a sales site. There's nothing there to buy. It's, it's not a, a pitching, recruiting site, anything like that at all. What it is, is it's a site that showcases all these agents around the country, real estate agents that we taught how to work with us, personally trained them one-on-one. -on -one, and they're now on half the states. So it's an amazing phenomenon we, we created a couple of years ago. And boy, it's really taken off. So the cool thing is, is you don't have to pay them, <laughs> right? And uh, they have all the tools to identify, analyze, negotiate properties on yours and my behalf on and off market deals. So this is the real deal, guys. I mean, I highly encourage you to take advantage of it. And if you are a real estate agent, boy, you need to go out there and just click on the uh, get more information button because the market is changing. And if you don't have investors in your pocket, or you don't know how to work with them correctly, just know that there's an absolute program for that, a process, a learn, is learning material, just like anything else in life. You got to learn how to the method, use the methodology and the terminology, and this is the place to do it. In any case, hey, without further ado, we got a great guest today. Josh Rhodes is on from the beautiful state of Alabama, and we're going to talk about crypto. I know you're thinking, well, why are we talking about crypto? It's because it's, it's, if it's not part of your life now, it is going to be. It is going to involve real estate, and it already is. So first first thing, Josh, thank you so much for coming on board here, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Honored to be here. Yep. Well, we just were talking about Alabama, and I, you know, I haven't been there for probably two years, but um, you know, one of my uncles went to school there, and I've been there teaching probably at least a dozen times teaching. And uh, the thing you can, you can get there that you can't get elsewhere is real, true, good Southern home cooking, you know? And I, oh, yeah. and I, I know this isn't a food channel, but I'm telling you, I've been all over the U.S. and Canada, and if you want a good mixture of Southern cooking and, and seafood cooking, good Lord, you got to go to right. Alabama. Plus, it's a great oh, place yeah. to invest. Amazing investment opportunities there, you know? Yeah, huge. So, hey, if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, fill me in or fill us in, if you could, a little bit about yourself and how you got into this, and then we can dig into some uh, some meat and potatoes, you know? Yeah, I um, I'm an Alabama born and born and raised boy, and uh, like to think of myself as an entrepreneur and a, an investor. I'm into crypto full time. Um, I grew up in Northwest Alabama, honestly, one generation removed from extreme poverty. Um, my dad came home from Vietnam, started a small lumber business, uh, selling lumber, and um. But my family was pretty pretty poor. I mean, my grandma used ketchup to make spaghetti sauce because she couldn't afford ragu. So, like, that's kind of like where I'm from. After college, I played baseball in college, uh, which first person to go to college in my line. Mm -hmm. um, after college, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by this crazy guy named Kiyosaki. And like many of your listeners, it's ch it changed my life. And I started understanding assets and I started businesses and uh, started buying real estate. I went through the subprime mortgage crisis and uh, out of that, I don't know if a lot of people understand this, but as a reaction to the subprime mortgage crisis, Bitcoin was born. Um, mm -hmm. If you go back and read the Bitcoin paper and uh, the white paper that the pseudonymous creator uh, Sat uh, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote, it was all in reaction to single point of failure, too big to fail banks and the money supply and the system therein. So um, once I discovered crypto in about 2017, I bought Bitcoin and Ethereum just like everybody else does. You know, I saw some FOMO social media post and got into it. But once I invested, you kind of, you know, when people pay, they pay attention. And once I got invested, I was like, oh, wait, this is an asset class mm -hmm. and it has properties and characteristics much like real estate, insurance, um, stocks bonds, gold, all these different asset classes that 
you know, our economy is used to. This is a new asset class. It's not just a technology. And so I started doing my own research and the internet's a wild, crazy, dangerous place. And man, I just got fed up with Twitter and YouTube and TikTok and people in gamer chairs telling me to buy a new crypto coin and, you know, pump and dump stuff. And I just thought, man, if this was like back home where I'm from, like Southern hospitality, take care of your neighbor. Like I would have people all my life drive up. My dad would like lend them money to buy little league jerseys and groceries. Like I wish crypto could be like that. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what? I'm an entrepreneur and we live in the greatest place in the world. Let's just create something like that. And so I started my brand called Crypto Y'all, which is a merger of that hospitality of safe training and education for uh, for crypto curious people um, who are looking to build wealth and, and maybe have someone like me to emulate. I've been pretty successful over the last few years with four digit returns and I've been able to create a framework for passive income. And that's where we are today with Crypto Y'all. I love it. And uh, you, you, you mentioned some good stuff there. And we're going to get into a lot of details here, guys. But uh, uh, just know this. Crypto is not some magical, mysterious thing. I mean, it may be if you don't know about it, but I would encourage you to read and study, okay, and learn like I did. And it, it really uh, dispelled a lot, of, a lot of myths and misunderstandings and brought light to the real truth about the matter. And the fact of the matter is this. If you look back in ancient history, when people first started minting coins, they had a, you know, they had currencies. The Egyptians had a currency. The Romans had a currency. Different aristocratic families had their own currency. It's sort of like that, except we're riding on a wave that's above the fray. So we're not crypto is not caught up in the mainstream world of a traditional, you know, institutional banking and governments and things like that. It really is about and reflects you and I, the citizens of the world. It's about us being individual, autonomous, entrepreneurial, free people. Okay. And it's going to make a lot more sense as we go through this podcast. And it is absolutely relevant to real estate because people are now trading real estate using crypto. Okay. And it's a, it's an integral part of my investment portfolio. I don't just have real estate. I've got crypto too. All right. So you're going to learn about this and take it from here. Use this as the beginning of the education, not the end of it. Um, but uh, by the way, actually, I've had the pleasure of meeting Robert Kiyosaki, had dinner with him and spent the day with him. So That's awesome. Ago. Yes, way back in the 90s, took his first program, read all the books. And uh, the dude is, if you haven't read Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Cashflow Quadrant, I highly recommend you do that, everybody. you know. And again, so Josh, back to you, let's, let's, uh, let's take it forward here. So talk a little bit about, um, we know a little bit about you, Let's talk a little bit about what, what it is you do and, and you know, related to crypto and maybe one of your own experience or, or like a case study type of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, typically, the person who engages with my brand the most are, is one of two people. They have never invested in crypto before. Uh, they know there's something there. Um, they don't know where to look. They feel a little untethered. You know, CNBC talks about it a little bit, but not enough. They don't know where to where to go, who to trust. There's not a lot of like Robert Kiyosaki type figures yet in the crypto space, um, at least that are not well known. And so then they start listening to celebrities um, that they can't talk to, but they just like you know read their tweets and they just start, they need a framework. You know, they need a strategy. So that's person number one. Uh, person number two, they they've bought some crypto. They've dabbled with it. But again, they don't have a framework or a strategy to expand their net worth with it. They don't know how to use it as an asset class. And the main thing that uh, the framework, I guess, that I created, again, from other influences in my life, I had to create a a, a kind of an anti-self-sabotage framework so that I wouldn't emotionally get into crypto. And what I did is I created what I call the crypto flywheel, which integrates three wealth strategies from other asset classes. And those three strategies include, number one, cash flow. How do you create daily cash flow with cryptocurrency? That's number one. Uh, Number two is appreciation. That's just like many asset classes. Price goes up, price goes down. 
It can be accretive over time. Uh, buy a house, it goes up over time. Buy gold, hopefully it goes up over time. It hasn't in 40 years uh, on average. But if you look at the different classes, they all have some level of appreciation. And then lastly is leverage. So you can use your crypto assets as leverage to buy more cash flowing assets the same way you can equity in a home or uh, commercial property or whatever whatever assets that you own, you can borrow against. Elon is trying to do that. You know, when he tries to buy Twitter, he's borrowing against his Tesla stocks. So the wealthy, they just don't sell their assets. They loan against them. So I bought a couple of rental properties last year in the bull market using Bitcoin as my collateral and not going through the traditional banking system and just funding directly through um, uh, a 75% loan to value uh, against Bitcoin positions. And then I use the cash flow, of course, from my rental properties to pay off my loan against my Bitcoin. And now I own multiple assets because of that one transaction that I'm able to just assets or begetting assets. So the crypto flywheel works in concert. The, the cash flow creates house money that then you can buy things with longer, you know, conviction and utility, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera. Uh, you can use that cash flow part, the crypto farming and decentralized finance world to use house money to buy appreciating assets that then you can use as collateral to buy more cash flow. So it's a nice little food chain that we've got and it's called the crypto flywheel and I teach it to my members. Nice. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> I wanna, what I want to do is talk about the nature of it versus traditional banking and finance. And we, we, we tell people it's decentralized. And I mentioned earlier that it kind of rides in a, an atmosphere that's above the free, above traditional government and institutional banking. But, but talk a little bit about what that actually means. What does that look like when we say decentralized? Because a lot of people are listening here and thinking, yeah. okay, I know the words, but how does that apply to me? What does that really mean? You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, let's talk about a couple of facts. Number one, um, banks, traditional banks, we'll, we'll, let's just pick on the big four, right? The big four, the wealthiest top banks in America, they've made $8 billion last year on overdraft fees alone. Think about that. Just, just somebody didn't have money in a right account and they, they got charged 20 or 30 bucks. And that's $8 billion of fees that the banks charged and they're the custodial account that we're giving our liquidity to and we're giving our deposits to so that they can go do business, do massive equity deals, buy insurance companies, buy private equity and VC and whatever they want to do, mm -hmm. and then not pay us hardly any interest yield on our checking accounts where the money from their, their liquidity is coming from. So you've got, you've got that whole thing that we are just walking lockstep like robots in the system and we have all of our lives and it's just kind of been the quote unquote way things work. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not sharing the wealth. And hey, you know what? Great. More power to them. They position themselves. Welcome to capitalism, right? So we can't mm -hmm. like, we can't just sit in a, in a victim mindset. But I think what happens is to your point earlier, the innovation of blockchain technology now democratizes uh, profit sharing and yield earning. So I could choose, let's just say I've got $500 and I need to put it in, a, in an account somewhere. I could go to Wells Fargo and I could drop it in my checking account and pay a monthly maintenance fee on it and then um, not make any interest, you know, make two cents in, in interest. Um or I could put it in a decentralized finance protocol and earn very aggressive rewards that at minimum out, outpace inflation um, and possibly even 100% plus if I know what I'm doing in a crypto farm uh, and double my money every year, triple my money every 12 months simply because of the rule of 72. And that's because the blockchain technology every single day it, there's no bank teller that it has to hire. There's no middle management. There's there's nothing like that. It's a peer it's a peer to peer network that algorithmically, because of an emotionless, um, non human robot brain, it can take our liquidity 
and earn yields and bring back to us a more fair portion of yields that we know we're going to earn up front before we make the deposit. And it, it allows us to not only get paid uh, kind of like stocks, you know, how you can get paid a dividend check once a quarter on certain dividend yielding stocks. Well, this is daily again, because of an algorithm on blockchain, smart contracts are delivering to us daily because there's no closing bell. There's no opening bell in crypto because no one has to go to sleep. There are no bankers. So that's, that's the big difference between decentralized finance and traditional finance, meaning it truly is decentralized if yeah. software is running the show. Exactly. You know, what's interesting too is um, several years ago, the Chicago Stock Exchange spent a billion dollars running a brand new fiber optic line directly from the New York Stock Exchange to the Chicago Stock Exchange to gain, I think, one hundredth of one second advantage on trading. Now, think about that, what that means to you and me, the average everyday American. Oh, yeah. Okay? We, we go to bed at night. We think everything is all hunky-dory. We got our 401k in place. We know the stock market went up 100 points or went down 100 points, but we're, st we still, we're still there, okay? And the next day, you know, some report comes out. By the time you get the report, it's nine, at 6 o'clock at night. You're home watching the news. You decide, I better make a move here. You go online, you realize the value of a 401k just dropped by 10%, 15%, 20%, the people who are in that game and make a living out there in that industry, they have all the inside information. I don't care what the laws say and, and what the laws, the laws do and the how it's enforced. It doesn't matter. By the time you and I find out, it's already too late. Now, move on to the world of crypto. Because of the way it's, it operates, it's, it's live right in front of us. There's nothing between us and the crypto. It's you, me, and the computer and the internet. And the same information available to you and me and the guy next door and the person in India and the person in China, uh, everybody has equal an equal uh, uh, access to the information at the That's time right. of the brain. It's, it's fluid. It's real time. That's a major difference. You know, when, when they, oh, yeah. they control it like they do in, in traditional banking, they have the advantage. It's the wolf watching the hen house. You know? That's we, right. You know? <laughs> so, in any case... Now, everybody listen now, I wish you could type in, I wish there was like a live action uh, call and you could type in and I asked the question, now are you angry? And everybody would be like, heck yeah, man. All <laughs> right. What, what do I do about that? So so now we talked about this magical you know, the internet and um, this new layer, but, but if you could talk a little bit, like what is the metaverse? Let's talk about what the metaverse is and that might help uh, clear things up for people too so they understand really what we mean when we say that, those things, you know? Yeah, well, I'll make this really simple because all of meta, you know, there's there's not really the metaverse. Um, there's a movie called Ready Player One that um, a lot of people allude to um, this virtual reality world that we all plug into, kind of like the Matrix. Um, honestly, we've had a we've had metaverse uh, for a long time. You know, crypto is going to make it and popularize it, but. You know, if your kids play Roblox or Minecraft, that's a metaverse. You know, if you grew up playing Super Mario Brothers or Zelda, that's metaverse. Uh, there's all kinds of manifestations. That the big difference now, though, with blockchain technology is that these there there will be metaverse uh, environments that are created and decentralized, managed by smart contracts, blockchain, and have their own native currencies like like you were saying how ancient civilizations might have their own currency you know um one of the the two largest metaverses right now off the top of my head is called the sandbox it's a massive multiplayer game uh, lots of brands uh like atari and snoop dog and adidas and other brands uh are sponsors of it but it's a virtual crypto world much like a crypto minecraft that has its own currency called sand and it has a us dollar equivalent value and you can trade it and um it's all a real place but yeah metaverse can be a, a video game uh or it can be a bank lounge Ch jp morgan chase uh paid i think upwards to six or seven figures to have a sponsored virtual reality lounge in Decentraland, the first uh, metaverse game. 
Uh, again, you can, it has its own currency called mana that you can, you can trade, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's literally virtual real estate is kind of how you think about it. Whether you want to look at it as billboard space for your commercial use, or if you want to look at it as an escape from reality or a gaming and entertainment mechanism, uh, we even have real estate, uh, brokerages now who are, you know, not using brick and mortar offices anymore. They're using virtual office space, Zoom meetings, obviously, but they're creating their own metaverse offices where they can interact and do business, et cetera. So it's going to be a very interesting evolution. I think uh, the gaming industry, gaming video game industry is going to be the industry that really helps to popularize it. But then you'll start to see other institutional and traditional uh, industries adopted as well. Yeah, I agree. I know. I know. There's early on there was people a lot of you know opinions that you know there's, there's going to be chaos. The the governments are going to you know do all kinds of crazy things. I'm not saying they they will or they won't. I just think the reality is is you know the the traditional frameworks are going to have to adjust. You know, it, it that that's my opinion. I don't I don't know. You know, nobody nobody has a crystal ball. That's one of the beautiful things about life is. Every day is a new life. Every day is a new adventure. And, you know, all I try to do is look at the facts and look at the data. Think about human nature. And when you're, so when you really learn about crypto and blockchain processing and metaverse and you understand human nature, you realize, you know what? It's inevitable. It's, it's already here. Right. You know, I, one of my nieces just had a child a few months ago. Uh, her name is Paisley. She's only two or three months old. Um, her whole world is going to be shaped by this. This is going to be her reality. You know? Totally. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. Just, and, oh, go ahead. Yeah. If, and, well, and even even the big institutional money like Fidelity and BlackRock are getting into it. Fidelity um, Investments put a paper out in February called Bitcoin First. Everyone can Google that, download it. It's 26 pages of very simple to read and easy to understand, but it's about mass adoption. And one of their lead analysts actually tracks the adoption of Bitcoin uh, and crypto in relation to mobile phone technology and internet and the velocity of their adoption. It it couples perfectly with Bitcoin and crypto. So uh, it's actually on the same, almost exact same pace and adoption arc that the internet and mobile phone technology is on. So you know, critical mass, whenever popular, you know, mass, mass adoption happens, that's when we'll see incredible values, even more so than we've seen in the recent years. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, let's talk about the, the, the frameworks then, um, since we've mentioned it. So what, what frameworks do you see for building wealth with crypto? You know, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for participating in the massive passive cash flow podcast. I uh, also wanted to let you know that the book Global Investor Agent is officially out in print and in Kindle on Amazon. You can get it by clicking on the link right here. Uh, if you are an agent, definitely grab yourself a copy. Th this book, guys, was not just written by me. I also included eight other investor agents from around uh, the country. And I didn't just handpick them. I literally opened it up to the, the entire audience. And for, it was first come, first serve. So you're going to get feedback from brand new agents all the way up to top 25 team leaders, some on my team, some are not on my team, with valuable insight and instructions and guidance and actual checklist to follow to not just survive but thrive in this market. I know you're looking for that advantage, and this is it. Uh, by the way, if uh, if you are an investor, grab a copy for your agent. And, uh, and for everybody, all proceeds, uh, sorry, all profits from the sale of the book, Kindle and print, all go to the Healing House Foundation. 100%. Thank you for doing that too, guys. Let's get back to the show. Yeah, I would allude back to the crypto flywheel that we talked about. You know, just like any business, and I and I, I kind of look at my crypto investment portfolio as a business or a group of businesses, um, much like you would have a rental portfolio and every rental property is technically an LLC or a business. Like uh, being able to collect income streams uh, in the world of crypto is very easy. It's the most accessible crypto or asset class, in my opinion, out there. I love real estate. Don't get me wrong. And most of a lot, a lot of my net worth is in real estate. But if you want to do a deal, you've got multi-week process ahead of you, unless you're buying cash, you know, wholesale, et cetera. Well, in crypto, if you've got 
10, 25, $500, 2,000, 200,000, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what amount of capital you have. You can enter into the space on a fractional level. Um, You can do it in the next 20 minutes if you want to um, and be earning yield on it daily. Um, Or you can um, buy anything you want as long as you've got an account attached to your fiat currency source like a bank. So it, the, the, the asset itself is the most accessible asset in my opinion. Well, I, I think every collection of businesses, obviously it must have cash flow. You know, you've got to have some kind of uh, momentum and lifeblood flowing into the coffers some level of utility, some income stream that's building the war chest and utilizing the rule of 72, compound interest. Uh, Einstein said it was the eighth wonder of the world, and it's true. Uh, you know, If you double your money, if you have $5,000 and you double your money every year starting now, in 12 years, you'll have $20 million. Wow. It's pretty nuts to think about. Yeah. And it's just simply because you're able to figure out how to get 0.266% yield per day on your investment. That's how it breaks down. 365, 100% divided by 365 is about 0.26% a day. Well, that's awesome. If you know that number, then it's just a matter of being self-reliant, confident enough to navigate crypto and your wallet and your crypto farms to go, okay, where are my 100% plus APYs out there? And I can cash flow those and double my money methodically. It's not sexy. It's very boring, actually. It's as boring as crypto. I mean, it's, it's as boring as rental properties. Like yeah. you just get a check. You know, you get it. You, you, yeah. you harvest your, your, every day I harvest my yield. Takes me less than 10 minutes. I recapitalize it or redeposit it back into the APY pool so that it's earning even more yield on yield. So that's one strategy that just feeds itself almost. You can start with whatever capital you want to start with. Um, And then, of course, what I do is I use that cash flow to buy things that I have a conviction about. Uh, When I say buy things, I mean invest in greater p- positions or build yeah. my equity. So like, I really believe in Bitcoin. I really believe in Ethereum. There are other things, other cryptos that I truly have done a lot of research on. And I have newsletter members that in re- you know, professional grade research that I, that we've done on certain pro- uh, projects out there that have real world, like save money, save time and make money for businesses and individuals that I, I'm like, I want to own more of that. And I use my cash flow to buy more of that. And then, of course, leverage is a, is a tool to buy more cash flow like we've already discussed. So those are the ways that I use that framework to uh, increase my net worth. Obviously, net worth is a whole discussion. But if you're just talking about w- being rich or being wealthy, um, mm-hmm. I think uh, Grant Cardone, I heard a quote from him. He said, um, rich people sell stuff. And wealthy people don't. And that's the difference. And so it's a facet. It's a fascinating perspective, you know, whether you like him or hate him or agree with him or not. Um, yeah. Crypto, crypto allows you to do whichever of those you want to do. Yep. Yep. Well, what's interesting too is, um, you know, I get a lot of questions from people because yeah, that my, my lane is real estate. I just happen to uh, have some students who get into crypto and I decide to be the student and I'm glad I did because now I'm in crypto. But one of the things I've learned first was I was interested in, okay, now how does this affect my my tax return? What does this, how does this affect my tax position? And the cool thing is about uh, cryptocurrency guys is still today, you know, if you're a U.S. citizen, the IRS or the government still considers it an asset. So what you, the strategy you described there is exactly what I do. I just, my, my earnings, I just pile them back into the principal. So it, I'm, I'm compounding. My, my trading account, everything that I earn goes right back yeah. into it. And yeah. As long as I do that, that's not a, ta- it doesn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not a tax accountant, I'm not a tax attorney, but my understanding is that doesn't trigger a tax event, you know? So it's only when you literally take it out and, you know, you touch it, so to speak, then that could be a taxable event. But that's true with any other asset. So this is pretty cool stuff. And if you have yourself structured properly, 
you know, in the right kind of account, and you can you can trade. You can, you know, as long as you don't touch it, you can take earnings from one asset and buy another one. You yeah. uh, know, yep. So, um, so everybody, listen. Just remember, there's um, this this is this is a real thing. If this is all new to you, hopefully this was a trigger to get you to start to pay attention to learn yourself. But um, but what I want to do, if, if you don't mind, uh, if we got, if we're still good on time here, Josh. Um, when it comes to real estate, uh, we, we were talking about this before. The first property was was transacted using um, um, crypto. I call it crypto, but it's really um, um, FTEs or EFT, excuse me. But talk a little bit about that. In other words, I, I know that we can now get credit cards based on crypto, right? You can buy, sure. you can get, and, and now people are buying and selling houses and cars. It's, I think the first car house was a few years ago, but, but what does that mean to people listening? Like, you know, instead of them going to a bank and getting a loan, like they, maybe they still get a loan, but maybe the down payment comes from crypto as opposed to going to the bank, you know, but uh, yeah. touch on that. It's kind of an interesting subject because we're all real estate investors. You know, so. Yeah. It's a really big deal. I mean, um, and I'll give a pro tip to your listeners as well, you know, because you'll see a lot of, during bear markets, which at the time of this recording, we're in a bear market, not only in crypto, but in in all capital markets, basically. Um, and the the thing to understand is when when you're in a bear market, there's a lack of liquidity. There's a lack of flowing money, right? So you, you always want to be careful about you know, leverage and loans and anything, no matter what you're doing during times like this, because banks have margin calls and liquidation events that will require you, them to claw back, you know, their funds or at least use your collateral as payment themselves. But um, during uh, bear markets, there's all there's still ways you can do it. Um, and during bull markets where you can use your crypto as collateral, um, with I almost completely um, or exclusively facilitated by lenders who are online, um, whether they be blockchain custodial accounts uh, of some kind, central exchange, th many of them um, have gotten in trouble in this bear market because they had mismanaged their balance sheets. Uh, some of them are that, you know, it's, it's just like any other economy uh, and or recession, you know, like the strong survive. So it's easy to see now who the, who the strong lenders are. Uh, and yeah, you can use uh, either Bitcoin, Ethereum or other major uh, larger market cap cryptos, or you can use stable, uh, stable coins, you know, that are tethered to a, U.S. dollar, for example, mm -hmm. and that way there's no volatility in the price, and there's no liquidation events or margin call opportunities. You just maybe you've got a hundred thousand dollars, and you don't want to use, you don't want to go through the traditional bank, and you need fifty grand to go buy a rental property. Well, just you can use your USDC, get a point, you know, fifty percent LTV on that, mm -hmm. and you could be funded in the next forty-eight hours um, instead of you know waiting four to six weeks for underwriting. So. It's a cool, cool time. Um, yeah. I've done it myself. It's it's an it's it's a no brainer in terms of how hard it is to do it. They don't care about your credit score. They don't mm -hmm. care about anything yeah. because they have the blockchain. They know you have X amount of Bitcoin or X amount of USDC, and that's the collateral, and that's the term of the loan. And uh, it's a really fast, easy way to do things, do to do business. The the when it comes to the NFTs and like, you know, real world businesses like real estate integrating blockchain technology, I like to think about, I mean, real estate is really an awesome industry that, that helped build the categories for me to under, to even understand yeah. crypto. So the funny thing is, is coming back to, to real estate to explain crypto is, is really funny, but I mean, yeah. when we own a property, right? We have a deed. Mm -hmm. We have a we have a a piece of paper down at the courthouse, right? That represents our um our unconditional or conditional ownership of a property. Well, now that can all exist on blockchain, and smart contracts can act as our immutable ownership ledger that tells us and the world 
that that property there is owned by Josh and mm -hmm. the taxes are here. You could pay the taxes there. You could pay the insurance there. The entire ecosystem could be mm -hmm. facilitated outside of a filing cabinet at a courthouse with bureaucratic red tape. Yep. You know what I mean? So there, that's the future. And there's, there's companies and awesome crypto startups out there that are, that are, um, really revolutionizing the the transaction side of the, the the industry. And then there's some other fun stuff like tokenized real estate, you know, like I've I've invested in multifamily uh units in St. Louis, Missouri for as little as fifty dollars a share. You know, they they they'll take an entire property and cut it into thirty thousand shares uh and sell tokens at fifty dollars a pop and you get paid daily rental income off of your off of your investment. So it's really neat um, and, and really awesome. And it, it'll, the, the blockchain technology is, that's just like some applications that are being exercised and used now. We're very early in the real estate game for blockchain, but it's, it's going to touch every major industry from health record management to yeah. the, the DMV. Right. <laughs> you know, like it, it'll, it'll touch everything. Well, we, we actually are, um, I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag here. So we're working with a system called Enriched Data, and it's using blockchain processing to capture real estate transaction history. You know, um, that's awesome. It is for research, just amazing, Fred. What I mean for anybody listening that's in real estate, that should have just shut off a big giant light bulb on your head because that changes everything—the landscape of research, and you know, the, the, there's integrity in the data. You can't just like the crypto. I mean. Sure, there's going to be criminals in the world. They're going to figure out a little loophole here or there, but they can't, you know, it's, it's the, the integrity is in, it's an integral. It's built into the, to the framework of this, how this yeah. all works, you know? So it's an amazing, amazing concept. And uh, kudos to that, that guy. I can't remember his name, the, the gentleman that created all this back in, you know, late two thousands. Um, um, but in any case, uh, um, I, there was one more question I had. Oh, I know what it was. Um, I know there's people out there listening. I was fortunate. I had a couple of people that were successful with crypto right away and showed me where to, to, to look and learn and gain information and test small. And then bef before you go big, but for the people that have, that have not made money, what's one of the biggest reasons you can think of where, why they haven't been successful yet with crypto, you know? Yeah, normally, and uh, I, I don't say this to be condescending. I say this because I came from this experience. A lot of times when people get into crypto, they get into it the same way they might have, might have gotten, into, gotten into stocks. You know, it's a little bit of a crypto slot machine. You know, um, Elon Musk tweeted about Dogecoin. So let me go buy Dogecoin real quick. And, you know, and um, they, they kind of get on the train at the wrong station is probably a way of thinking about it um, rather than having a, a true um, investment mindset. The other thing, and I think this is probably the most important thing, is time horizons. Uh, people, when you make an investment, you, people are rare, especially if they're making emotional decisions. They're not thinking through their timelines. You know, when do they need access to this capital again? What are their expectations on ROI? Um, what precedent do they have with that ROI and what are their goals? One of the biggest things that, or the, the first thing that I ask all of my new members who join my mastermind is, Hey, we got to create a ferociously specific desired outcome. Mm -hmm. A ferociously specific di desired outcome includes two things. Number one, a date literally on the calendar and a dollar figure, whatever that is. So some people it's like, Hey, by December 31st, 2022, I want to create $500 a month in passive income using crypto farms. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, I want to own 10 Bitcoin by July, 2023. Um, some people are different. You know, everyone has a different personal or uh, personal financial outcome, but you got to get specific because when you do that, you can reverse engineer your crypto strategy because I'm telling you, it's malleable. There is, you could be conservative. You can play your cards close to your chest and you can get just be really conservative and never lose money with crypto. You can uh, be aggressive and ambitious and possibly lose some money. I've lost money, but your gains might far outpace 
your losses. And so there, there's something for everyone in crypto. And the biggest thing is just getting, getting involved, taking action and owning property. Uh, at the end of the day, crypto is property. It just is right. by nature and by uh, future regulation and law. It's going to be regarded as commodity and property. And that's something that is valuable uh, to not only rich people, but to anyone who's trying to build wealth in the human race. I mean, if you look at it globally, less than 3% still even have a crypto wallet. And it's on every other co Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. So you're early. You're early still. We right. we 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 are very early in the adoption curve. This is Amazon buying Amazon stock in 1999 is kind of where we are right now. Yep, I agree 100. percent Amazon, Apple. I mean, there's, you know, this is in the, and this yeah. has such, and those are those are commodity based investments too. I mean, they're they they produce a product. You know, a you know a cell phone, a computer, um, and of course Amazon's. You know, basically commerce you know shipping products all over the place at the low prices so the and that obviously affects a lot of people but the point with all this is is you know it's just a matter of time this is this is going to affect everybody you know it's that it's that far reaching and i'm so glad to to that for my two students that decide to be teachers for me it's amazing you know the, the all these relationships can pan out like that so um i'm glad i am where i am everybody listening you know, you know me as a real estate guy, but just know that's not the only thing I do. And uh, I've done well in the stock market. Um, but this is this to me is this is probably one of the biggest things to occur in our lifetime, you know, um, and probably in, in more like a millennium, you know, maybe even more than broader than that. You know, this, sure. this, is, this is that big, you know, so yeah. um, I'd say it's a good time to learn. You know, any any final words of wisdom or thoughts maybe something we didn't cover do you think it'd be really good really good idea to mention these folks before we before we sign off josh yeah i think find a um find a group to invest in don't invest alone if you if you do the lone ranger investment routine you um are you're exposing yourself to far more liability and and what i mean by that is far more opportunities to fail than you are going to succeed um, investing in a group, in a club, in a mastermind, in in a in a group of people who have skin in the game, you know, not just people who are trying to sound rhetorically intelligent on a Reddit or a online Facebook group, you know, when they don't have any money invested to begin with. But get in a get in a legitimate group of people who are helping you qualify and vet crypto investments. It's a it's probably the biggest thing you could do to be successful. I agree. Well, speaking of groups and being part of a, a network, I mean, what, how, how can people learn more from you? How can they get a hold of you, you know, website, blog, yeah. podcast, anything like that at all you can share, you know? Yeah, I would I would say three things, uh, b depending on where you are and how, how assertive you want to be getting started. Number one, um, you can go to CryptoYall.com and join my free newsletter there at, on the website. Um, that's just an email subscription and I send at least one, uh, helpful, um, crypto news email per week. Then I also have a YouTube channel that you're happy. You're welcome to subscribe to just go search for crypto. Y'all, uh, you'll see, uh, my face on the, the channel logo. And then, um, lastly, if you want to apply for my, uh, cohort, I do a training cohort called get paid daily. Uh, we have about 182 members. It's not massive. It's actually very boutique and uh, access to me on an unlimited basis. And I interview every single person who comes through the door. So it's high quality, low quantity group. Um, if you want to apply for that, uh, the URL is cryptoyall.co slash crypto farming. Okay. Uh, that's cryptoyall.co slash crypto farming. Okay. Um, and that's, you just fill out a little application and then you book a call with me on the backside of that application. And then you and I chat to see if it's a good fit or not. Okay. So everybody just remember that's Josh Rhodes, J O S H Josh Rhodes, R H O D E S. And the site is crypto y'all 
C R Y P T O Y A L L. For for all the the Yankees out there, it's that's y'all is the way we say it. In the <laughs> <laughs> so crypto y'all dot C O. Okay. Um, and if you had just those two things, you could figure you can Google those things and the uh, rest will pop up. But uh, um, Josh, I really appreciate you taking your time to do this, man. This has been one of my favorite ones. And uh, Good. I really look forward to the future. And, um, you know, we should probably stay in touch and, and uh, you know, probably collaborate on some things. We, I've got a, a we always have projects going on. Yeah. Uh, corporate housing that I think we can tie directly into the crypto world. I just, the wheels are spinning as we're talking. But, um, you know, everybody else listening, uh, you know, if you could do do Josh a favor and actually do the do me a favor too, leave a review for this podcast episode because this is yeah. definitely unique. Um, and you just learned a ton. I mean, it, in that short half hour, 35 minutes time frame, you got a real education there. But promise me you'll dig deeper and do more learning. And um, but also reach out to Josh, give him a big thank you, and uh, you know, join a join a local, join a tribe, you know. They're online now. You don't have, doesn't have to be local. You can be anywhere in the world and do this. You know, it's another thing I like about it. But and while you're out there on the internet, please go to globalinvestoragent.com for your real estate investing. Grab one of those agents out there and make use of them. Remember, they got, they have access to every single property in the country. doesn't matter if it's on market or off market. I mean, this was huge for you. It doesn't cost you a dime. And, uh, and we train them. We, we know what they were doing because we train them. You know, we're investors and we train them to work with us. But uh, do that. And if you are an agent, by the way, I mean, I'm really pushing this hard lately. The, you heard it again. The market's changing. It's no secret. The, the writing is on the wall. And if you don't have this as part of your business model, you know, I, you know, it, it's going to be a street fight. Might as well make this part of your business model now. Be ahead of the curve. Don't wait for the other shooter drop on this economy. Get get going now. Get these investors in your pocket. Learn how by going to globalinvestoragent.com. Click learn more. And uh, we'll, we'll get you set up with a phone call or talk to one of the agents. So in any case, everybody take care of yourselves. We'll see you on the next Massive Passive Cash Flow podcast. In the meantime, take care and God bless. Thanks for listening to this episode of Massive Passive Cash Flow. Be sure to go to realestatewithgarywilson.com to join our community and start building wealth today.